let's uh, stay in Victoria, given that's where you're joining us from again, Justin, and talk about Daniel Andrews' new tax, you know, 7.5% on Airbnb. Uh, here he is uh, defending this approach. If you want to put it to me, the $7.50 per $100... Is the highest. And state because state it's higher world. than what happens in Florence or New York or Auckland... Uh, mum and dads are worse off. That's just not right. That's just not right. People need somewhere to live. Everyone needs somewhere to live. Yeah, Justin, I don't know that the way to get more of something is to tax it. Yeah, but I, I just... Look, I've said this uh, many times over other issues as well. Why the hell do we always have to look at a brand spanking new tax? Why can't we look at some form of incentive? And this can also be linked back to COVID as well. We've got some of those businesses that rely on the air and B&Bs around it and that tourism accommodation, you know, many places like, uh, like restaurants and entertainment venues, they were just starting to bloody get their confidence back. They were just starting to get some of their money back and then they slam on this thing. That's going to drop down the tourism for the Airbnbs and they're going to suffer. If the Andrews government really thinks that they are just flying in on a white horse and they're going to fix the rental crisis by just dropping in a brand spanking new tax. I think they're just sadly mistaken and it's going to do a lot of damage. I, I, don't, I really don't think they've thought this one out. No, they haven't. And whenever you bring in a new tax, there'll be unintended consequences. I think you and I would both agree that this tax is, is, is the wrong approach. Well, it's, it's the highest short stay tax in the world now. And he has the temerity to eyeball us down a camera and say, it's a modest charge. It's modest a modest charge. charge. It's the highest short stay tax in the world, buddy. Makes the decision easier. Instead of flying down for a weekend of footy, you just fly down and watch your team and then fly the hell out of there again. <laughs> Can't, <laughs> afford to Can't afford to stay. And, and of course, it's another and means by which government Please. is telling landowners property owners, what they can and can't do and making life well, harder. Well, it's my property, but the government is tell, trying to tell me what to do with it. It's, exactly. It is incredible. That's the socialist approach. Let me quickly get re your reaction, though, Liz, to this ABC journalist who, for a stunt, for a stunt, for a story, has actually officially named her baby methamphetamines rule. Now, <laughs> I, you know... I, I laughed at this when I first heard about it, Liz, but I think this is appalling. This is a, an officially named baby now. Um, I just think that's an appalling thing to do to your kid. Look, you can change it just as easily. And all I can say is she is dedicated to her job. So she's an investigative journo and no. she was doing this to test the system to see whether it would yeah. slip through. Yeah. And you do, it, it does stand so to wonder how it So what's the big investigation? People, through. We all know people name their kids crazy names all the time. What's the big investigation? You get to choose your name. Why it should the government She was clearly very passionate about this particular um, topic. But we know you can't name your baby Duke because it's it's a title. Is that right? You can't name them Hitler because that's a very Is that right? bad figure in history. Do we know this? Yes. The so the government will controls pin what you, we name our baby now. But you can but, but, name but you them can meth, meth, crystal meth. I crystal bet there's a meth. crystal meth somewhere. We better get to the break. I just don't think the government should be telling us how to name our babies, and I don't think the ABC, even for a short time, should be calling some baby meth rule.